should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light. Welcome to Abnormal Mapping. I'm your host, M. With me is regular co-host Jackson. Hello! This is episode 66. Remember I used to think of things that happen on various numbers? I don't have one for 66. Uh, they think it's all over. It is now. What is that? It's when England won the World Cup in 1966. Oh, okay. Cool. Who were they against? Germany. Okay. I don't think of Germany as like a football playing state. Oh my god. <laughs> when, you, when, you ask me, when you ask me who's good at football, it's like Brazil. Uh, Germany's pretty good. I, I don't know. I don't know enough about football. But yeah, lots of, lots of people are pretty good. When I think of the good football like, countries, it is uh, Brazil, Argentina, yeah. um, France. I was about to say Paris, but France. Paris uh, Earth. Paris Earth. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Shutting this down. Jackson Paris is on Earth. Okay, so well, this is a normal mapping when we talk about video games. <laughs> Paris is, is t- there's that ep- there's that level in uh, Twisted Metal Two. Paris is in a lot of video games. Paris is in a lot of video games. It's true. Have you played Remember Me? I have Neo yeah. Paris. Neo, pa- <laughs> fuck! I forgot they called it Neo Paris. <laughs> it's just Paris. It's not like Paris is. They've like moved somewhere else, and we're like, we're gonna call this New Paris, but it's the future, so it's Neo Paris. It's just Paris has AR now, so it's Neo Paris. Are you saying that's not the best choice? Because I think that's the best choice. I'm saying it's ridiculous. I'm not saying it's a bad choice. Yeah, you better not be, because it's not. It's the best choice. <laughs> Cyberpunk. As you can tell, we've been playing a lot of video games lately. <laughs> Jackson, what have you been playing since the last time we recorded? <laughs> What's that little laugh there? What was that little laugh as you threw that question to me? Realizing that I'm going to have to answer this after you, and my answer is way sadder than yours. How is yours sadder than mine? I've played Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> you also played, like, good games. You played a bit of uh, Yoshi's Island. Yeah, what I did was, like, set up my emulators uh, on the PC. Um, I've been using RetroArch, which is, like, this shell program for a bunch of emulator cores. And I'm using that instead of the like individual emulators because it's got an X and B interface, and you can just go from ROM to ROM. It's very nice. I recommend it as a as a like a thing to set up if you can't be bothered to just load the emulator and play a video game like a human. Um, but yeah, I played some Yoshi's Island, which is fantastic. It is uh, not as uh, it's called Super Mario World Two in in the the US stupidly. So I was like, I should play this before I go into uh, Mario 64. That was my rationale. <laughs> yeah, and no, that's instead, fair. And it's, it's nothing like Mario World. It's a much slower game, even though you move a lot faster. Uh, it's a much game about like like exploring the environment, which is a part of the Mario games before that, but because of how I played them, I never really did. I just got to the end of the levels. Yeah. Uh, so I'm kind of playing it in chunks and just enjoying the... I'll load it up. The music's fantastic. The art is beautiful. Uh, and I'll just enjoy some some chill Mario. It, it's where Mario happened, by the way. Where like if um, I, I guess I'm where Nintendo happened. The modern Nintendo arrives because lives don't matter. Nothing matters. You get new lives when you die. It's fine. You're fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, I feel like that's kind of true of Mario World, but I guess I don't remember. Do you get sent back levels if you die? If you get a game over in Mario World? I, th- I think there are save points in Mario World, and if you... I have never... I don't think I've ever gamed over in Mario World, so... See, that that's the thing, yes. But I'm fairly <laughs> sure it works on the save point thing, because I was using save states through Mario World, so I also didn't see this a lot. Uh, okay. I would have to actually check. I There's no need to be using any of that now. Okay, tell me about the Bandicoot. And then I decided to play Crash Bandicoot, apparently? Uh, we, we, Crash Bandicoot, of course, we covered in episode, which we'll link five. here. 
Oh, is it five? Okay, we episode played it. Five. It's it's maybe one of the worst episodes of this podcast in my memory. Yeah, because when we played it, I hadn't. Before we did this podcast, I basically only had played like console games and up to 360 games so my literacy at old games is very low and crash bandicoot is incredibly unapproachable very frustrating the save system's bullshit and i wasn't playing it on an emulator with save states uh i was playing it on like my vita and uh so i had a horrible horrible time with it I had a better time now uh it's that still a still, bad game it's still not a great game but um i i i thought it was okay i played um one and then two uh because i'm interested in like the the trilogy but i didn't buy it so i just played the, the old games <laughs> fair uh, enough and it was fine yeah i don't know it was fun um it, the game looks great uh especially too i i like the aesthetic of those games even as uncomfortably racist as they are yeah yeah I like to break the boxes. It is fun not to. I don't like to break all the boxes. Once you tell me that's like a thing that I'm being measured on, I hate that. But yeah, the, no. the satisfying. It is satisfying to break a box. Yeah, no. I mean, it, it's job. so satisfying that Ratchet and Clank stole it wholesale. I I was thinking playing that like, hmm, what if I just played some Ratchet and Clank? I never finished that first game. I could just go onto the PS3 games and be having the best time, but I didn't. Yep. <laughs> I didn't do that at all. No, no, you didn't. But I don't, I mean, I've least... enjoyed I've enjoyed playing old games. It's fun. Yeah, no, I mean we we have a podcast literally about doing that exact thing, so it's I, good. I, I don't have any takes on Final Fantasy V, but I started it. You are not deep enough to have takes on the like the interesting things in that game haven't really happened yet. So no, but I am just I I am enjoying it. It is fun to level up the jobs. Mm, that's fair. I've been playing Final Fantasy X, which I can't talk about because I'm only started it because I want to do a lot of side stuff, and that's going to be our October game club. And if I don't start now, I'm not going to be able to do that stuff in the time frame we have. You, so. you, you are incapable of playing games like I still can sometimes. You're too old. Yeah, I can't just devote a whole like week to playing one game with all of my free time. Uh I'm too busy and I'm too distractible. Distractible. Like I just get guilty about like spending my time on one thing, and so I don't. Uh, so what I'm doing instead is I'm playing save point to save point in that game. So I'll play up until like if I'm like in town, I'll do like a story event or two and then go back to the save point. But basically until they give me the next save point. Sometimes that's like uh, like ten minutes, and sometimes that's like forty five minutes. But uh, it's going slow. I'm still on Besaid, so you know I'm not that deep in. I'm excited to get there. It's one of the. It's the, maybe the Final Fantasy game I know the most about, but also the things I know about it, both story wise and like the mechanics of it, don't make any sense to me. So I'm excited to see it be like a real thing that I can understand. Um, outside of that, have I? Man, I, I, I feel like I should play more video games, but lately I've just not been in the mood. Like we've got all these podcasts, and I'm reading a lot more right now, uh, just for my own sake and stuff. I just. I just don't have it in me. I'm watching The Simpsons. I could talk to you about The Simpsons, I guess. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Uh, yeah, next month we're playing The Simpsons Hit and Run. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> I've played The Simpsons Hit and Run. I get why people like it. I don't think it's that great of a game. It's it's great. It's fantastic. It's the best game. It's not. It's fine. I, it's one of my first... It was the... I got four games with my Xbox when I got an Xbox, and that was one of them. Yeah, it's like the definition of inoffensive licensed game. It's higher on the scale than that, but that's maybe because I have a lower standard for licensed games in the PS2 era. <laughs> yeah, like, it's fun, but, like, it's super derivative, and it's just, like, if you wanted a game that's like other games, probably not as good, but full of theming you like, it's one of those. It's great at it. Well, yeah. The Simpsons. We're gonna and play The, the Simpsons the movie game. It's not, a, it's not a, it's just the game. It's just EA's The Simpsons The Game. The Simpsons The Game based on the hit movie, based on the hit television show, The Simpsons. Yes. TM. TM. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's it, I guess. I don't know. We, um, we we're, were sitting here, like, thinking, oh, we haven't played many games. Let's do a segment two. Oh, wait, we don't have a segment two. And sometimes, I guess, these podcasts, now that we're, like, a busy network, are just going to be short. Like, this is our flagship show, but I feel like the other shows kind of eat up more time sometimes. Uh, it just depends what the focus is and what we've been thinking about. Yeah. Uh, like, especially as it would be very easy to fill every episode with a segment two if we just reached into the fucking what is the discourse this week and laid out some takes, but we are not interested in that. We'd rather have shorter, tighter shows that are, like, evergreen and interesting and fun. 
Oh, I'll tell you a fun thing, Jackson. I thought about maybe I should buy Destiny 2. Okay. Uh, because I have friends who play it. And I was like, I don't know. I've never played one of these. Maybe I could get in and like play with my friends in the evenings. We could all get on a call and just hang out. And oh. you know, you know, if you do that, that I am like contractually obligated to do that as well. Oh, you'd be fucking cursing me. I'd do it in a heartbeat. I, are you kidding? I would do that right now. But I don't want to. So if you do that, you're ruining my life. I just want I just want that to be clear. Well, all my friends are playing on PS4, so I'd be buying the PS4 version. I, oh, I, I, I worked that out. That would be fine. Okay. Uh, or you and me can just be rebels and play together on the PC version and fuck my friends. <laughs> we could, but then we could just play Minecraft. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I'd rather just be playing Minecraft. That's fair. If you if you rather if you wanted to set up a PC game on a server, there's we could do that. There are so yeah. many things we could do. I also thought about blowing my paycheck next week and just buying a Switch. That also occurred to me. If you do that, I will actually kill you. <laughs> if you if you have Splatoon two and I don't, as the person who cares about like Splatoon as a multiplayer game, on this call, there is a non-zero chance next weekend I get a Switch. Oh, I hate. I can't. I even if I wanted to like ruin my life that way, they're out of stock until August everywhere. It's not a good chance, but there's a chance. So you're saying there's a there's chance? A chance. <laughs> yes, I am saying there's a chance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bigger chance than that. Yeah, no. There's a, there's a bigger chance than Lloyd Christmas had. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the title of my autobiography. <laughs> A bigger chance than Lloyd Christmas. I'd read a book titled that. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good bit. Uh, that's kind of where I'm at with games. Thinking about playing games in the future is more interesting <laughs> to me than playing games right now. Uh, I'm thinking about paying old games. So that's that's also, also where I'm at. Well, uh, let's stop this foolishness and actually talk about an old game then. How about that? Let's do it. this month was voted on by our patrons it is devil may cry released in 2001 by capcom this was directed by hideki kamiya uh produced by hiroyuki kobayashi this is famously uh was originally designed to be a resident evil 4 for the playstation 2 um and they gave it to kamiya like shinji mikami was like hey you build this kamiya and kamiya was like what if i made the protagonist cool and focused on a game that was cool and he did that and then mikami looked at him and was like this is not resident evil at all what are you doing stop this and he was like instead of stopping this what if i just made a separate game and he did uh because of that there's a lot of holdovers from resident evil in this game uh there's a lot of like finding chalices and brooches and gems of various descriptions to shove into walls to open doors uh there's also like a vaguely fixed camera angle that's like more uh like everything's in 3d and it's not like actual pre-rendered fixed camera angles like uh resident evil is but it does often point you at a weird dutch angle when you enter a room and then the camera does it a very obnoxious swoop around as you walk down a hallway just enough to obscure everything you're gonna fight uh the, the camera angle specifically like which is the, the big change in future games um because they, they they keep the fixed camera until four Mm -hmm. uh but it's specifically you definitely get the resident evil thing where you go into a room and the camera is always facing the door you just came in of the we are obscuring the zombie that is here shots but there's no zombie <laughs> yeah um this is considered the f one of the first or the first character action games uh that is in part based on like the whole thing with this game is you have a big weapon and then you have guns and the guns are used to extend juggles and combos 
The juggling system, Wikipedia hopefully tells me, because I never played it, is based on like a bug in Onimusha Warlords where you could just keep enemies up in the air if you kept slashing. And they were like, what if that was a mechanic? Because that's cool. And guess what? Now it's a mechanic because it's cool. Uh, this is a big, long series now. There are four games and a reboot. We covered the reboot way back when in episode one. Uh, we have done a meta mapping on that. We'll link to that. It already exists. Please enjoy that. Uh, this is kind of like our... Uh, I, I want to do this basically because we did that episode. I was like, what if we just went back and played Devil May Cry? Uh, and we have. It Jackson. Was, it was a game we both wanted to play, but would never have done it outside of the context of this. Yeah, uh, because we both tried to play it since <laughs> starting this podcast and both got about an hour in and we're like, nah, let's, maybe not. <laughs> yep. And then we read a guide and it turns out, oh, yeah, actually, it's fine. <laughs> yep. uh, Jackson, why don't you tell people about the story of this game? Okay. How much did I retain? Let's go. Um, so, eons ago, yes. there's uh, a dark lord called Mundus, yep. and uh, a guy named Sparta, who I think is... Sparta is a devil? Yeah, he's a, he is also a demon, I guess. I mean, they, they use demon, but I don't know. Okay, demon. Um, but he, he fights Mundus and basically seals him away or whatever um and sparta is a hero uh, anyway flash forward to now and you are sparta's son and you have a shop N unclear what the business of the shop is but trish no walks in it's entirely clear because on every possible surface is a <laughs> demon head impaled into the wall with a sword okay i guess it's just a <laughs> lobby for his demon hunting business <laughs> yes <laughs> Unless he's selling all those objects and can't, like, get rid of them. <laughs> no, I assume that they are trophies from demon hunting. Yeah, so he's, he is a demon hunter. He is Dante. He's the son of Sparta. Uh, and Trish comes in and is like, there's the one mystery you haven't solved. What happened to, like, your mother and your brother when they were killed by Mundus? He's back. And so you are convinced to go to this castle uh, in search of Mundus uh, and uh, take him out. Or at least that is the implication, because the story is fucking nothing. Like, Trish just disappears. She leads you to this castle, and then there's no reason why she's no longer there. She just stops being there, because you have to explore the castle because it's a video game. You forgot uh, one of the key points of Trish's personality. Oh, she's she's cool. and she's, No, no, no. Uh, Not that one. I, I have. Is it the mum thing? Because that's yes. later. No, that's because later. that's from the very beginning. Because oh, shit. It's, it focuses on a picture of Dante's mother, and Dante's mother looks exactly like Trish. Right. That's why he goes with her in the first place. Oh, <laughs> what a stupid thing. Anyway, Trish comes in, stabs him to death, uh, and then he's like, How dare you stab me to death? That was rude. I'm fine. Takes the sword out, realizes she looks exactly like his mother, and goes, Hmm. I'm going to trust you now. Let's go and do this. Let's go to this castle and kill this, this demon god, whatever Mindus actually is. Yep. And then, and then that happens. He, he does. Basically, the, like, the entire game is exploring that castle, fighting enemies. We'll get to that part. To like assemble oh, the ritual that opens the portal to the underworld. Because like, yeah. the portal is like just in the castle, but it takes forever to gather all the parts to make that happen. And the game never really just describes that's what you're doing. It just gives you... like piecemeal objectives that make zero sense outside of the context of i guess dante knows what's going on but i sure don't it's really weird because it's not like there's not story in this game like there are cutscenes, there's voice acting there's like a lot that happens by the standards of like especially maybe not 2001 but like a little bit before that this wasn't this isn't like a threadbare game when it comes to story but it does leave out all the important context you're just doing things that the game tells you to do like the puzzles of you need to get this thing to open a door are like told to you through the context of menu instructions uh, and it's never clear that Dante needs to do this to get to the place. Like, they, they, they're they very wonky about that. Yeah. Uh, so you never get the feeling that, like, Dante is on this mission. It's more just, I'm playing a game, and sometimes there's a character who will talk to me, and every single character in this game talks in the same voice who isn't Dante. Every single character speaks like this and is going to cause death onto you. <laughs> it's not, you are making it sound way more legible than it is. It's more like, you the horrible Dante, we're here to destroy you. <laughs> then, obviously, they are, because they know, so all these characters have subtitles, even though <laughs> yeah. they're clearly speaking English. <laughs> 
Because you hear the lines, you see like, oh, Dante, I will kill you. The poor there's, some, will never there's something live. about how like totally unimportant all that dialogue is that makes me think of like House of the Dead. Yes, yes, <laughs> fuck. That, that is totally what it is. Like it's way more House of the Dead than Resident Evil. It's G showing up to be like, uh, <laughs> bam, God, yeah. God, I had to put that together, but you're right. Yep. <laughs> And so you fight a bunch of bosses, or more importantly, you fight four three. bosses, each it's... one three times. Yes. Uh, What's the fourth? So let's Well, I guess, like, Mundus is the fourth. Yes, all right, yes. Okay. Because there's three main bosses. One is a spider who is called Phantom. Yep, the spider's a real pain in the ass. Uh, one is the Dark Knight who is called Nilo Angelo. Yes. Yes. Mysterious one... Dark Knight. I wonder who Ooh. that could be. <laughs> well, maybe we'll find out. Um, oh no! There's totally four bosses. There's the fuck off Griffin. Yeah, I remember the Griffin. Is the Griffin just called Griffin? Yeah. Okay, great. I was gonna say Griffin, but I, and then yeah, he even and then me. there's a fucking garbage pile named Nightmare. Oh no! Oh, Nightmare's so so hard. So yeah, so you like the game is basically built around short rooms where you fight a bunch of enemies and a couple of puzzles, and then they'll take you to the boss. It's a really, in the context of what the genre would go on to become, it's a, the most slight game. It took me about five hours, and that included a couple of hours of grinding. Yep. Uh, it, yeah. Yeah, no, there's, there's just not a lot really, to it. The, the combo system's very light. The, like, slashing is very easy. Well, yeah, uh, there's, there's only one attack button, and it's all about just the timing of the attacks. And so there's not a lot of, like, there's, a, there's an attack button, there's a shoot button. So there's not a lot of, like, nuance to doing combos and stuff. Like, if you compare this to, like, Bayonetta, which is the obvious one, because it's, like, Kami is next big crack at this. Uh, like, Bayonetta has, a, like, in every loading screen, a list of, like, 100 possible combinations based on your weapon combos uh that are just like a ton of like fighting combos and it's very intense and very elaborate and this game is like you can press triangle 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 or you can press triangle 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 <laughs> <laughs> i i think it's important to state that like with bayonetta specifically and um uh like the kamiya action games they still it's still only one attack button it's still y is attack and b is shoot no because the difference with that game is they discover they they change shoot into nebulous second button like it, it allows you to attach a second weapon, and some that starts off as guns in that game, but it doesn't remain guns for very long. Oh sure, but when I think of like the the action games of that era, and you think about like something like God of War, most action games are you know the square square triangle big attack, and the 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 cameo line of action games never went that way. Mm. It's still more about like. My point is more that as that series went on and as like Devil May Cry and Bayonetta happened, the the amount of complex complexity you get out of like the timing of pressing triangle increases way more than it is in this game. Because this you just yep. press it over and over again. And then yeah. you press R1 and triangle to do the big attack. Yep. Uh and part of that is because the, like they've clearly are not sure how to build like they, they haven't realized that they have like a single player fighting game and they think they have like an adventure action game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so most of the time is about, like, the actual things you do, the enemies are usually just annoying nuisances in the way. I would assume you can skip most fights when there's not a, uh, a demon door, yeah. demon door um, on the screen, because the enemies you just kind of deal with, and none of them are that hard. None of them require much strategy, because there isn't much strategy available at this point in 2001. Yep. So it's it's really interesting. So I wouldn't like by any modern standards call it a good game, but because there's very little there. But then at the same time, everything's there. <laughs> yeah, like it's the same game. Yeah, it's... because these haven't changed that much. They've just they've focused on like making the attacking like a more interesting system and stripped out all of the like collect an orb to put it in a door uh, bullshit. Mm -hmm. yeah, also, so you... this game has like the whole thing where it goes up to like stylish combos, but as far as I can tell, there's no reason for like to do like you aren't rewarded, especially yes, outside outside of the like mission rewards. There isn't like a ton of reason, and like the orb bonuses for getting a better rating on a mission are not that high. To be fair, we deliberately if, like grind grinded for a bit as we fought the spider over and over again in the corridor to get 500 orbs drops so we could get like enough devil trigger to complete the game uh if you're not doing that 500 orbs as like a bonus early on is a lot yeah no that's true 
but when I think of the ways in which like getting pure platinum and Bayonetta, like each, but the the thing that happened is they started breaking out each fight into a rating and i feel like that makes more sense and is more like the structure of reward is better than like doing it at the end of every level <laughs> because bayonetta has like 15 levels uh, but each level has like 15 separate fights and each fight is graded but the, the thing with like devil may cry is the the it has like 23 missions and most of the missions are less than 10 minutes long yeah, no, I know. Like they're very short. They it is you need to find one thing, like one orb, and put it in one socket to open up one door. That is most of the missions. It but is very rare that you will have actual. Because um, you you okay. go into the the, the the like the the big castle and you think, oh, this is gonna be like a Resident Evil game. I'm gonna explore the castle and poke at it and see where I go. And it like kind of is, but it's actually very directed, and every mission has very one clear place to go. So you're not really poking at the seams of the environment in the way that the opening suggests. But also, like, for a game in which, like, even if it was, like, you need to perform well to get more things, it doesn't even have a chapter select. You can't just go back to old missions. Yeah, it's weird they didn't... <laughs> it's weird that they didn't add that to the um, HD collection. A lot of weird things are weird about the HD collection. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think there's only one really weird thing about the HD collection, and by weird I mean magnificent. <laughs> Uh, is it the fact that every single thing in the game is like a JPEG that's the wrong size for the television? Uh, okay, two things. <laughs> the other thing is the amazing stock Photoshop jobs that intro the mission, like the menus of the HD collection, where you, oh, you, mm. the game loads into a DVD menu from like 1996, and then you select which game you want, and then it loads into another terrible JPEG. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Uh, another thing that the I loaded up like two minutes of Devil May Cry 2 just to see what video game that was. Uh, and what that game has that one doesn't have is the cutscenes. There is a... They have done the black bars wrong. So you can see the scene. Like there's like a line beneath the, the letterboxing right at the bottom of the screen where there's no black bar. And you just yes. see the scene through. The, yes. 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 Oh, it's such an amazing shit show because the actual like porting and performance of the engine and stuff is fine. Like they've done a good job with it. It's not like the Silent Hill collection or anything. It's just that everything around the edges they've they've changed nothing and haven't like accommodated for the platform. It's very fun. Yep. Uh, so yeah, like while that's kind of uh, a mess, the actual game itself runs really well. Like it, it looks it looks decent in widescreen. Like the HD stuff, like. It looks grimy in the way a PS2 game does, but it, it like they did the work to make it look fine. Like it's the the part where it, like it turns into in-engine cutscene. You're like, oh right, PS2 games. Yeah, uh, there there are like specific cutscenes where it's clear it's moving between areas, so they've had to do pre-rendered like versions of in-engine cutscenes. Oh, yep, they're beautiful. That era has sadly passed us now. Um, but then like the actual game itself, like part of its simplicity is because you have literally two weapons in the entire game. You have a sword and you have the dumb gauntlets. Nobody likes mm -hmm. you have a third weapon, but you don't ever use it. it it's what? another sword and you only use it at the very end of the game. Yes, you can use it, but it sucks. <laughs> yeah, because it doesn't have any of the power ups that the other that the sword you actually use in the game does. Mm -hmm. And then even between the two, the sword and the, the gauntlets, you really just want to use the sword. <laughs> But also, like, you, like I, some people like the gauntlets, but the, like, special abilities you can unlock in the shop are basically the same between the two of them. Mm -hmm. It's like, do you want to use a fast sword or slow gauntlets, and do you want lightning or fire damage? Outside of that, they basically operate the same outside of double trigger. Yep. More importantly is you get a bunch of cool guns, like the grenade launcher, which is the best gun. Uh, I believe it's called grenade gun. Oh, grenade gun, sorry. Maybe one of the best things, and I miss when games were flashy like this, when you select a gun, it has the amazing animation of the gun being fired and, like, reloaded, and then it equips it. Uh, the actual best part about the guns and the names of the guns uh, is Ebony and Ivory. Ebony and Ivory are Dante's signature, like, dual pistols, to which you would assume, ah, he's got a gun called Ebony and a gun called Ivory. No, not true. The label on the gun just says Ebony and Ivory. <laughs> yes, because they're a pair. No, no, you have one. This is not how it works. <laughs> they're a pair. Ebony and Ivory, you know which one's which. You don't need anyone to tell you that on the gun. 
It's like I, it's like Bayonetta Scarborough Fair. Like you know they're called Parsley Sage Rosemary and Thyme, but on the gun it says Scarborough Fair because you know what that is. I'm shaking my head at this. I'm 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 saying this was a bad choice. <laughs> Every time I was like, "Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me?" No, that's uh, this this followed through into Bayonetta. This is still a thing. <laughs> I'm glad that it remained consistent. Yeah. Also, Scarborough Fair is a better name for Much four guns than Ebony name. and Ivory is for two guns. The 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 real actual like biggest change between Dante and uh, Bayonetta, and even like into Bayonetta two, which I know isn't Kamiya, is them slowly realizing that being cool sucks. <laughs> yeah, like charging up a great combo is really like i guess it's nice if you're like an expert like i am good at never getting touched blah 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 but what actually is good is be giving you the equipment to never get touched in the first place mm -hmm. because what bayonetta offered that this game does not is like a reliable dodge that like makes you awesome yeah i i like we've talked about this in prior episodes but the bayonetta dodge is like the linchpin of that game and so this game feels very empty without it, and I, I'm interested in specifically three because that's the Devil May Cry game that everyone loves as the like pinnacle of this era of design uh, in this genre. But without that specific dodge mechanic, like av avoiding attacks is a real struggle. Like you just kind yeah. of shoot people away and either don't give them a chance to get attacked, or you're in Devil Trigger, so you just take the hit, and, or because the you... dodge doesn't work very well and the jump. The... Yeah, the okay. thing with Dante is your jump as you're jumping up has the invincibility frames. So what you should always be doing is jumping. Like you the the thing if you're not like really good at the game, if you're not like a combo expert and can like avoid everything the instant it happens, the best thing to do is just jump like a maniac. <laughs> and it doesn't make it doesn't make you feel cool. It just makes everything feel a little ridiculous. Yeah. And like as they uh, as time went on, they lent away from that and more into... Uh, also, like, tonally, like, Dante sucks in this game. He sucks so much. Uh, just as a character. Oh, you mean the rambunctious scoundrel devil hunter Dante? Yep. Did you did you see the thing or Dante's design is based on John Taylor from Duran Duran? <laughs> this is like how uh, Solid Snake's design is based on Christopher Walken and if you just google john taylor and look at the images you're like n at first you're like no and then you're like i see it and i hate everything more now <laughs> oh mm, i don't like this yep you're like no i see how you get here kamiya you absolute madman <laughs> <laughs> oh the most absolute of the madmen yes <laughs> god god ah oh, dante so yeah, most of the game is going through these levels and fighting random monsters. There, I, like honestly, I feel like there is there aren't like for a game that is like an action game. I feel like you don't run into that many like you have to fight all these guys and you have to do that to proceed. Like the game doesn't really understand that's what it's about yet. <laughs> no, because like the design of the game is mostly about you have to put thing in like use keys to open doors. Like that is the yeah. the philosophy of this game, um, and. It, this like manifests itself in various ways it's like it's good variety like you have to do a platforming puzzle to do some things you'll have to um go through an underwater section like once yep <laughs> you'll have to uh like fight a couple bosses in a row sometimes which is a bit stressful because you're like oh i don't have many yellow orbs uh, and the fucking retry system sucks so much because yes. not only do you are you limited by yellow orbs like for how many times you can retry your item count stays the same throughout them. So I had to like fight the final boss and I was just using my items because obviously it's the final boss. When am I going to need them again? I'm going to need them to retry the final boss. All those items were dead. Uh, the fact that you died on the final boss is really funny to me. Second to final boss. I did not die on the final boss. Okay. Because okay. uh... you think the final... Yes, the, the game has two final bosses and I was very I was very put out by the actual final boss, but luckily that wasn't that difficult. Yeah. Um... The yeah, the uh the other thing that happens because of this is they don't like because the game is like twenty three chapters or whatever, but those chapters are really short, they'll do the obnoxious thing of just putting a boss in the middle or the end of a chapter, and there are not mid chapter checkpoints. So if you fail at the boss, you have to redo everything leading up to the boss, which is very annoying. So it it has this weird effect of it being very segmented the game that doesn't feel long and turns it into I'm sorry. Uh, and turns it into something very tedious 
Yeah. Uh, and and that design choice only makes sense when you realize this is a three and a half hour game in 2001 and yep. that wouldn't play even though had they just like done that to me today i'd be like perfect well done you did it you fixed video games yeah i mean w- w- i was on skype with you while you were playing in like like mid chapter teens and there's that one chapter break that's just as you open a door yeah like what <laughs> yeah it's just in between two hallways oh the chapter's over i guess whatever yeah, it's there's no real narrative or like gameplay reason for any of these chapter breaks. Uh, like sometimes it's oh I beat the boss, the chapter's over. Uh, I did the thing, the chapter's over. But sometimes it's like we're not gonna have this all be one chapter, so the chapter ends here, I guess. You know, and then there's like weird spaces where you're like one. There's like twice in the game where the chapter ends and then you keep playing before the next chapter begins, and it's very strange. Yes, and those are like noted in the guide as like the chapter doesn't begin until you go through this door. So if you wanted to go back and explore the castle, now's a good time because you're not being like marked on time for orb rewards. Yep. And it's just the in moments like that you realize how old this game is. Uh, in moments like the combat, you realize how old this game is because so much of the other stuff hasn't changed in like the greater world design, other than becoming like less of it. Um. But then there's these, uh, like, there's these, it's really interesting what has changed and what hasn't changed. I like, just like looking at the game as an intellectual thing. Mm hmm. Uh, another thing we haven't mentioned about the combat and about everything is that if you press the left trigger, the L1 button, you win the game automatically. <laughs> yeah, it activates Devil Trigger, which turns Dante into his demon form because uh, Dante is half demon, I guess. I, the implication is that his mother is like a human, right? Yes. He is pure Alucard all the way. No, fuck off. He is not. He is. His dad's a, his dad's like a famous demon lord. His mother's a human. He's torn between two worlds. Has a bunch of mystical powers, no, but is mostly he, just like a fey man. Like he's a hundred percent Alucard. He is not because his dad would have to be Mendes. Yeah, no, I like yes, you're right. But everything else, he's basically just Alucard. I'm not saying you're wrong. He's like a worse Alucard. I'm not here to disagree with that, but he's totally what if in, in the, the future, Alucard. Mode. Dante like got a really good suit. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Uh, yeah. I have no problem with that. Uh, <laughs> what were we talking about before this happened? We were talking about the Devil Trigger. Um, oh right, like so the way that his, that changes yes. combat. <laughs> he turns into his Devil form, and every attack does a bunch of damage, and you have like a slow regen. But also, you can if you buy the abilities, you can just like jump up in the air and like rain down lightning with the sword. Or if you have the if you have the um, the gauntlets on, it'll just cause like a giant fireball to explode everywhere, and it basically will destroy everything, including bosses, in seconds, just seconds. The final uh, boss, the first form before the like, like the magic ending cutscene, you only have to do one thing. Yeah. Uh, moment. I destroyed in literally at five seconds. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because the thing with the double trigger is you use it, it like you have a meter and you use, you use the double trigger and you destroy everything. And then if you don't destroy everything, it's very easy to rebuild it because you rebuild it by attacking. But attacking also counts as just spamming ebony and ivory, which often do very little damage, but will just slowly build your meter or quickly build your meter as you like jam on the bu- fire button as fast as humanly possible. And so you can just refill your meter with very little trouble and just continue to spam devil triggers. And it makes the actual like combo system and dodging and the mechanics of the game absolutely trivial as you just turn into a demon and kill everything. Yeah, it's really clear that they hadn't worked out the numbers on this yet. Like the guns do too high damage in general. Um, oh, except Ebony and Ivory, which do nothing. They're absolutely useless. <laughs> yes, Ebony and Ivory do nothing. But in like, you can use guns for most of the game if you really wanted to to kill everyone. Uh, I did. The... I did. I used the grenade gun for almost everything. <laughs> uh, I was shotgun. I didn't like the um, like being locked with no ability to jump for the animation cycle. Mm. Uh, I would often jump and then use shotgun, but yeah. So you, like the the number, the damage on the guns is off. The damage on the sword is way too low. The the the, the difference between regular form and devil form is just insane. Uh, I feel like in Devil May Cry Four, which I haven't played in forever, but I remember that being a little more balanced in terms of those things. Oh uh, God, it almost have to be right. Yeah, well, it have to be. But also, the, like by that point, and you're playing as like Nero, who is another character who has the devil arm, uh, and they have the the motorcycle sword. Uh, so you're like always charging up attack. Do you know about the motorcycle sword? No, no, I have no idea about the motorcycle sword. The motorcycle sword is a sword with like a motorcycle accelerator for a trig for like a a, a hilt. Oh, a gun blade. No, 
no, because so what you do is you charge, like you press the right trigger and you get the revving a motorcycle sound as a meter fills up, and then when you attack, you spend that meter as extra damage. Oh, that sounds that sounds a lot like the way Virgil fights. Yeah. In future uh, games. I have never played a game where I've like been able to control Virgil, but I've heard stuff like that. And so you're like, yeah, because Vir- Virgil, that. Virgil's like a like a. I mean, it's not really in this game, but he's like an an, an Iido master, where it's all about like the short sword is sheathed and you stand your ground until the last minute, and then you do one attack that does insane damage, and then you okay. have to stand your ground and sheath the sword again. Uh, Nero is also all about like he's got the devil arm, which you can use to like bring enemies towards you or jump towards them. Mm-hmm. Um, so because I played four first, Devil May Cry feels kind of empty without the ability to reposition yourself quickly at enemies. Yeah, uh, you can stinger towards them, and that part is like amazing and b- kind of broken at the distance Dante travels, but that's all you really get. Well, so did you spend most of the game stingering as your main form of movement? Uh, yes, because you travel very, very fast. And most enemies you will knock down when you stinger them. So the thing you would do is just target an enemy and stinger them and then just keep doing it. Like those weird crawly unknown creatures, I think they're called. Oh, like, you sting them to death. Yeah, you just keep stingering them and they never get up and they can never harm you until they're like death throws where you back off. But the fact that like Dante is better served just charging at everything with his one, <laughs> like a sword extended is hilarious. What a ridiculous character. Yep. So yeah, uh, most bosses are solved by just devil triggering and killing them. And then there is, inexplicably towards the end of the game, the hardest thing in the entire game is this fuck-off boss called Nightmare. That's literally just a trash pile that's like liquid until you turn on a light and that turns into a solid and exposes its core. But it is outrageously hard compared to everything else in the game. Yeah, it... Uh, by the time I'd fought it like three times, I was pretty. I could probably go yeah, through the whole no. game and never have to worry about it. But yeah. as like a sudden difficulty spike, it's like they realized, oh, this game is only three hours long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what if we put an incredibly hard boss? Like the first and second nightmare fights, I feel like are harder than the final boss easily. Oh, easily. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, By the time that I fought Nightmare the third time, uh, because you're in, like, a really small arena, uh, he doesn't actually do, like, his, like, hyper beam whip move anymore. He just shoots the hyper beam and you can just avoid it. And so all you really have to do is be really good at the cycle of shooting him until double trigger, then double triggering him, blah, blah, blah. And I was really good at that by then. Uh, yeah, and by then I had realized, oh, if I jump down next to the core and double trigger and slash the core, that does so much more damage than raining the, the damage from above. Yep. Uh, and it was really easy like position myself there yeah um the, the one thing that's really cool as this game progresses is like so you, you you go into the um the castle uh and then you go through like the gardens of the castle and then the whole thing is very like medieval architecture japanese europe nonsense uh which is great it's, it's great it's what you want um but then the actual ending sequence of the game is you going to the underworld yeah uh, and the uh, I really like the aesthetic of this game's underworld. Even if it's hilarious how much the end of Ninja Gaiden is just that, I was fucking yeah. shocked. Yeah. Like, there's rooms that are ripped out of this game. Yeah. And then you fight a giant statue god man. <laughs> yes, and then you have the same boss fight. <laughs> yeah. Oh. The, the cathed- Instead of the cathedral turning into a field of flowers, it turns into literal space. <laughs> but basically it's the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, you're like on a weird platform, and you're not on a weird platform, but you are fight, like avoiding beams as you shoot the thing. It's yeah, because uh, uh, backstory if you have not listened, Ninja Gaiden is one of my favorite games of all time. Just add if like I love it. It's the one I came to of this genre first. Uh, I did not realize how much it just directly took uh, yeah. from the end game. Like there's a room, Ninja Gaiden's end game. It has you going through uh, this 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 um like a weird demon looking castle as there's like cylinders in the middle of the room and walls covered in like guts and stuff and you just walk into that exact room in yeah. devil may cry with the exact layout of the like cylinder in the middle and enemies running outside and i'm like oh huh, <laughs> you know devil may cry has the problem where generally the game is much harder and also it's three times as long uh, ninja gaiden yes yes uh i assumed that Ninja Gaiden's difficulty was like in line with a lot of other games at the time. No, no, no that game. Ninja just Gaiden's hard. an incredibly hard game. Uh, I'm not very good at video. Like I'm worse than I am in video games just in general. Um, that depends on the type of video game. But I'm, I'm yeah. Uh, 
uh but apparently when i get good at a game it can doesn't matter how fucking hard it is yeah the thing is like you still have like we've played games here where you've spent the time in still like a game like ninja gaiden or like tony hawk whatever you spent the time to get really good at them so you're incredibly good (laughs) yeah like games that you were good at in your childhood you don't lose that yeah and so i have games like that but they're all like semi-narrative games or like mario platformers so like getting good doesn't mean the same thing (laughs) It, it, it's more a transferable thing like you getting good at platformers in the youth means you can fucking destroy any platformer and yeah, me no, playing that. platformers is weird because i have the ability to be good at them i have done challenging platformers and i can do it and i enjoy it but i'm too sloppy like i don't have the patience to do it every time yeah so no anyone who has bad. watched you play Mega Man knows that eventually you just get frustrated and try to run through every enemy and it doesn't work <laughs> except yeah. except except it works just enough to keep reinforcing it as a thing you can do and it's a <laughs> infuriating to me that the games let you do that <laughs> every time you're just like why not just shoot the guy every time if you shoot the guy he won't be a problem and i just sprint and that's how i approach most games <laughs> oh yeah so that's basically the game but we pivoted away from the story earlier because i think we, want <laughs> yes. to, I think we so, wanted to end so uh, around the around the time you realize like there's a cutscene where trish is talking to a big fuck off statue that is quickly revealed to be mundus uh it is revealed that Nello Angelo, the like dark knight that you've been fighting, is actually secretly Dante's brother Virgil. Uh, and how ha- he has like the other half of your pendant that reminds you of your mother, I guess. I don't it's anyway. It's what unlocks the blade. Oh right. You fight you fight him and then he does he die or disappear? I'm still not fucking sure what happens. He die I'm fairly sure he dies. He must die, yes. He has to die. Because okay. he doesn't cut there's no chronological point path this where Virgil shows up. I think you are freeing his spirit. So so this is just the ending of like that's really I feel like that's a really like ignoble death for everyone's favorite character in this series. <laughs> Look, we haven't played three. None of us have the Virgil context. Yeah, that's true. Uh anyway, uh so Trisha's working for Mundus and you're like, oh no, she's gonna betray me, blah blah blah. And she I guess she technically does, but Dante doesn't seem to be bo- that bothered by it. Right before we get into the super <laughs> ending, uh, I wanted to look at one other plot point earlier, which is the only other real like plot point of the game, which you fight the griffin a bunch of times. Yes. And then you actually kill the griffin. And there's a hilarious cutscene where you and the griffin kind of like have a chat and you're like, and the griffin's like, I'm just do, I'm paid to do this. I just, you know, you're a good yep. fighter. It's fine. And I held any ill will to you. And Dante's like, yeah, I get you. I get you, man. Uh, and then he goes, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to kill you now. Mundus is going to give me the power, and it's it's just how this goes. And then Mundus is like, I won't. You failed me. I'm just going to let you die. <laughs> no, he doesn't just let him die. Mundus is like a, like a fucking sky eyeball and destroys the griffin from space, basically. Yep, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. He just... Oh, what a stupid thing. That was the first truly like next level stupid cutscene of the game. I had yeah. no idea how it was going to go from here. <laughs> yeah, so Trish is like like or when you get to the underworld, Trish like betrays you by locking you in a room with the last nightmare fight. But then you basically are like I don't have time for this. You're not actually that important and like walk away. you just walk away from her, don't you? No, he gives her the line that's like I would kill you, but you look too much like my mother. <laughs> if I, great if great. i see you again uh, like it won't go this way get out of my sight and then when he confronts mundus she's like right there like chained up mundus is like i've got your girlfriend he's like that's not my girlfriend and i said i would kill her next time i saw her uh and then mundus k- kills her instead and you're like oh i'm sad about this and s- except i said i was going to do it because dante is dumb and has the memory of a goldfish <laughs> <laughs> he's such an idiot this guy is meant to be cool yep and so his mom girlfriend dies and then you get the uh the um, the best line of any video game of this era which we included as the cold open of this episode <laughs> i should have been the one to fill your talk so with light <laughs> which is the fact that we we've started out the premise of Kami is like, I want to make a game in which you're a cool character doing cool <laughs> things all the time. And you get Dante at 11 to the point where his voice is cracking as he's saying something as terrible as I want to fill you. Be the one. I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light as his girlfriend, mom, he actually threatened to kill five minutes ago is dead is the dumbest. Also, Mundus's reply is to just be totally like non-phased and like, I created her. I can create a hundred of them. Why don't we stop this foolishness and I'll just make you a bunch of Trishes? Yeah, and like the twist of the game is that everything has been like constructed by Mundus to be like a recreation of the Sparta situation. 
Yeah. He's like, so, yeah, no, you're the replacement for Sparta. She's the replacement for your mum, which means you're going to get together because that's who you want. You're like, you just are analogs for your parents. And I'm like, this isn't weird at all, Kamiya. This is fine. This is totally normal. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. And so you go in and you're like, there's only room for one Sparta and one no Mundus. I fucking, I don't care. Shoot him in the face a bunch. You have Afterburner in space. Uh, yeah. For the final boss. Uh, you do realize that Bayonetta is literally about how the evil space pope got with a witch to create a daughter that was the best of both of them that could unlock like the key yes. to the goddess, right? Yes, like, no, this I, is the like, same this, thing. This, 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 isn't, this, this doesn't go away. Uh, no. it, it, they had, hmm, it is crazy how well handled Bayonetta is for like the, the topics it is actually about. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That is a minefield. Like, you would expect like some anime ass game to just go in the worst directions. No, Whoa. instead, she, instead she puts her lipstick in a gun and shoots him in the face. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, and then they're best friends next time. Uh, yeah, because it's but that it's different. It's more. It's way more no, complicated than that. It's it's really good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, spoilers for Bayonetta two, but the way it ends with like the original Bayonetta logo rather than the Bayonetta two one. Yep. Fucking what a cool thing. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so you kill Mundus, uh, and. Is Trish there then? Do you? Yes. Yeah, Trish has to be because there then. Tr- like you kill Mundus, you fight. You well, tur- first off, you turn into a full-on demon and you fight in space and you kill the giant stone space god. And then like the underworld is collapsing because Mundus is a load-bearing boss, and so you have to get out because the like portal is going to collapse. Oh, right. so you, no. Yes. You get out and then you land in like the dumb sewer place you were in way earlier in the game, and you're like, Whew, "Glad that's over." And then a portal opens and Mundus comes out in like weird globby, like inside the giant god space statue was like just eyeballs and muscle, and it's gross. And he's like, "I'm here to fight you. You'll, I'll never die." And then Trish comes out like the fucking baby Metroid at the end of Super Metroid to give you her superpowers. <laughs> yeah, no, you get that. Yeah, it's because he Mundus shows up and is like, "It's not over yet," uh, and you fuck. Can destroy Mundus again, uh, but but even though <laughs> so it's hilarious just by it, like the weird intersections of mechanics, by the fact that he's like, "You will never destroy me. I am too powerful." And so the cutscene ends. You go into Devil Trigger mode, and he takes about five hits. Yep. Uh, and then there's another cutscene, and Dante's like, "I could never kill him alone. <laughs> I need Trish's mum power to save me." And Trish so, like resurrects yeah. and gives you the power. Yeah, she shoots you a beam, and then you fire the best double trigger that's ever been fired, and it, it vaporizes him instantly, which is all it took, apparently. Yeah. She could have just given to you that all along. Yep. And then maybe the second most stupid thing in all video games happens, in where it's the ceiling of the sewer urine collapses, and in falls a biplane that was just in the background of, like, the castle as you were going through it. What are you talking uh, about? It's amazing. And you're like, oh, we have the means to escape. We can just get off, like, we can just fly away like it's Sonic 2 or something. (laughs) Yeah, you get in Tails biplane and fly away. But it's also like the ending of Resident Evil 4. Like, it's... Yeah, they literally just did this again. Yep. Two Resident Evil 4s have the same ending. (laughs) Leon versus Dante. That's the the question. Uh, I mean, Leon is cooler... (laughs) inexplicably because leon's the least cool man but <laughs> well no leon's uncool which is why he's cool and dante is they've made him too cool by their standards so he just sucks whereas yep. like fucking ashley in resident evil 4 is trying to like hit on him and he's like i can't i don't even know what the, i'm just let me control my jet ski thank you oh right <laughs> i forgot the third stupidest thing that happens in this game what right before forget? the biplane falls and cl- like you're right. like we have a means of escape uh trish is like we're gonna die here but i'm glad i could be with you and she's like tearful and dante looks at her and is like don't cry trish N- devils never cry <laughs> <Ba-da, ba-ba. laughs> and then you escape because of course you escape and trish is like well glad we got out of that partner and it cuts to like six months later or whatever they're not unspecified amount of time but your devil may cry shop is now devils never cry and it's the two of you demon hunters so with my limited knowledge of the devil may cry series 
Yes. I thought it went the other way. I thought oh, your great. shop was first called Devils Never Cry and then became called Devil May Cry as like I thought that was a thing that happened in three. I thought the switch happened when like he saw his brother fall, uh, and he gained his fucking pathos heart. But no, it's the other way. You just become too cool to cry and you shack up with your invented, constructed mum girlfriend. <laughs> And it's it's like it's kind of amazing how much the ending of that game unintentionally presents character regression as its climax. Yeah, no, Dante learned a lesson, and that is if you're cool enough, you just get the lady who is your mom and your girlfriend, and you win. <laughs> I don't think I've seen seen a, a, like many story like I've seen bad stories about like bad protagonists, right? But Dante actively becomes a less interesting character with every plot beat. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I don't think that's intentional. They just did that. Yeah, no, it's it's really, really, really bad. <laughs> Uh, I'm really interested in Devil May Cry 2's story because I know people like people hate it for what it does to Dante, so I assume he's way too much of like a uncool person in that game. Uh, that's good. Someday we might cover it. We'll, we'll probably play it. I don't know if we'll cover it. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But Devil May Cry, I uh, I think it's really interesting. I think it, as long as you like read a guide to understand how the game works and how yes. easily broken it is, it's totally approachable. Like it can be a bit of a slug to grind early on, but once you know how the game works, you are basically unstoppable for most of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like progressing through the environment is enjoyable enough. Like it is yeah. a very slight game, but as a curiosity, it's pretty cool. I I feel like it's really evocative. Like the yes. spaces. Uh, are part Resident Evil, and because of that, they they kind of feel like the cl- they feel more like a 3D Castlevania than the actual 3D Castlevanias do to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really like that. Uh, you know, uh, if you've gone in, on to play like uh, you know Ninja Gaiden uh, or Bayonetta or any of the other games that followed in the wake, like it's going to feel really slight. But as like a way to fill in your own understanding of the evolution of the genre, it's totally like a thing that can be like enjoyed and played. Yep. Yeah, especially in a world where, um, like, the Resident Evil remake came out and, like, people, the old Resident Evil as a language of games is more understood by people than I think yeah. it was, like, five years ago. Like, all this stuff kind of coming back and as, like, a link between those two genres. It's pretty cool. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, it's fun. It's good. I like okay. a PS2 game. It's a miracle. I <laughs> know! You hate the PS2 inexplicably. Well, kind of explicably. Mostly inexplicably. But yeah, mostly inexplicably. But PS2 games are pretty good sometimes. Usually yeah. the the ones that have already been ported to PS3. Yeah. Yeah. Unless they're Jack. So for the last segment, we have questions. If you want to send us questions, you can send them to podcast at abnormalmapping.com or hit us up on Twitter. We have one question. Jackson, please read the question. The question is from at Atozircon. Uh, that is Z-I-R-C-O-N. Uh, yeah, like the like the mineral gem thing. Oh, oh, I don't know anything about rocks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, how do you two feel about Dante's personality after spending a full game with him? I actually love him. I think it's amazing, and he's my best friend. He is, like, everything bad about video game protagonists, but because the game is so gleefully silly most of the time, and because it's, like, th- five hours long, he just kind of feels like a dumb baby that I love. <laughs> yeah, so we, like, ragged on how stupid he is, but the, the stupid... And, like, it wasn't an intentional stupidity. They really do want you to think he's cool. But, yeah, the way it plays in the game, I cannot help but fucking, like, love this encapsulation of late 90s, early 2000s video game bullshit. Yeah, it's old enough to be really charming now. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and so, like, I, like I, I'm sure that if we play 2 and 3, I'm going to be really, like, annoyed with Dante as a character, probably, because I don't think Demon Hunter Special Boy is interesting. But this Dante, like... 
yelling about how much he said his wife girlfriend is dead even though he threatened to kill her five minutes ago like it's funny i like it a lot <laughs> i don't think he's ever a special boy more than this like i don't think devil may cry 2 has anything to do with anything oh they um, don't cover like son of mundus i have the soul edge sure but that, that's like that's all the prequel stuff that's all stuff oh that's that's all one thing we stuff. forgot to cover i want to bring it up when you first get the like soul edge the spark what is it called I don't, is stop it called calling it soul edge it's called sparta <laughs> <laughs> um it looks like the soul caliber 2 infected weapons things yeah but when uh, you get it there's this amazing cutscene where he transforms it into seven weapons that all seem cooler than any weapon you get in the actual <laughs> video game and i'm so mad about you it never use them you never use those forms it's like a tale it's, of it's, swords it's, and souls. Yeah, it's like it's like the giant transforming sword from uh, Monster Hunter. It's like a scythe. I'm like, I want to play with all of these weapons. None of them exist. <laughs> no, and now you just have to go play Monster Hunter. Uh, I could play Bayonetta too. That's fucking true. Yeah, you could. Bayonetta two has a great scythe. One of the greatest scythes in video games. That's actually going to be the thing that pushes me into getting a Switch, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. I would love to play Bayonetta two in bed. Fuck. Yeah, that's the only question. Yeah, so, you know, send us questions, of course. Next month, we uh, had all suggestions from uh, patrons. Uh, if you want to offer a suggestion, you go to patreon.com slash normalmapping. Back us at $5 or above, and every month we put out a call, and we put everything that we get into a poll. Uh, I will explicitly message you if there's a reason we're not going to pick a game you pick, like it's too close to something we just played. Uh, it, you know, it's too close to something we have coming up. We already have a game like it that you know there's reasons that we wouldn't choose a game um but, yeah suggest anything and we'll let you know if like we'll just let you know if it doesn't yeah. it doesn't fit but mostly yeah but we fine. had we had three games this month we had psychonauts which everybody knows we have nascence which is an indie abstract platformer game from uh, three years ago at this point and we had max Payne. uh the people have spoken we are playing max Payne, famous it game jumping and shooting it is time to activate the hidden trap card that we couldn't reveal Yes. Uh, the minute it was su suggested and we put on a poll, I was like, I can't say that we're going to do this because I think it would influence voting too much. And I, I really seriously thought Psychonauts was going to win to the point where I bought a copy of Psychonauts on PC that I didn't have. Uh, <laughs> did it's fine. That. Now I have it. It cost me a dollar. I don't actually care. We'll probably do but, it eventually. Yeah. We don't forget um, when you put a game in the suggestions box. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Uh, never forget. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But I told Jackson, I was like, you know what we should do for a segment two? It's just clearly there. We should watch the Max Payne movie. So we are also going to be watching a Mark Wahlberg vehicle, Max Payne. I saw this in theaters when it came out. I thought half of it was okay. And the rest of it is garbage. It's <laughs> so bad. It's, it's like an interestingly terrible film. Excellent. Excellent. It's also like a fucking 40 minutes too long, I feel like. But, you know, what are you going to do? Next time we get to see the Dante to Remedy's Bayonetta in Alan Wake. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is a direct comparison that actually lines up. The timeline lines up too. Uh, is that it? Are we just ending there? <laughs> no, we have to plug. Jackson, plug things that you do. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ, these have got long. So, Abnormal Mapping is now a podcast network where there's a bunch of shows, including uh, The Amory Score, which I do with uh, my friend Molly, and um, we go track by track through the songs of Coheed and Cambria and explain the fucking bullshit that is the story of The Amory Wars. Do you want to uh, talk about the joy that you discovered ye the other day as of this recording? Oh, the Coheed Reddit. The, the Reddit, <laughs> which is r slash the fence. It's not r slash Coheed. That no, there is an r slash Coheed, but it seems much more sane than r slash well, the fence. No, for some reason, most of the user base transferred to r slash the fence don't I don't know. I'm not an expert. That's just what I know. Um, anyway, they found our show and they hate it so much because we are taking down... We're like, it is a comedy show that is meant for people who are not really familiar with the bullshit that is the law. So we can explain it to you and we can all have a good laugh. The people who actually enjoy Coheed and Cambria as like a story do not... They're not fans. They do not like us. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> but they, they're fans of Coheed and Cambria, so fuck those people. 
Uh, I I feel a bit bad because I wouldn't like to like discover. Oh, no one has ever had a podcast about this thing that I love. No one has ever thought it important enough to talk about. Let's listen to it, and it's just me going, "It's shit. All the wives are dead." <laughs> um, look. I like bad, like I listen to some wrestling podcasts. I enjoy some professional. Uh, I don't really watch it much anymore, but I enjoy the culture of professional wrestling. All of those podcasts are about how much wrestling is fucking terrible. <laughs> yeah, no, you would think that if you are a Kohut and Cambria fan, you would be able to appreciate the finer points of the bullshit. But I guess none of those people are on Reddit. Yeah, no, if you're a Coheed and Cambria fan on the Reddit fan board for Coheed and Cambria, you are probably someone who thinks murdering wives is just fine. Don't murder wives. <laughs> Don't murder wives. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, also I do the goof zone. No, no, no. You didn't tell people where they could find the Amory score. Please right, they could find the Amory score at INeedMayo.com for there is a line where he yells with full sincerity, I need mayo. Yep. Mayo, of course, being uh, the character and not mayonnaise. <laughs> mayo, unfortunately, being the loser of this weekend's Splatfest, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh and uh, I also do the Goof Zone with Destiny, which is a mental health podcast, uh, which is, I think, every month is the, settle, uh, the schedule we have settled on. Uh, well, we're recording another one soon. It's at goof.zone. If you ever want to ask us mental health questions, you could uh, email us at podcast.abnormalmapping.com and we will answer them for you. Where can people find you on Twitter, Jackson? People can find me on Twitter. I head falls off. I forgot I hadn't done that. There's too many plugs. Yep. No, it's fine. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at em underscore being. Me and Jackson do a monthly yes. Star Trek book club called Second Officer's Slog. We read Star Trek books. You don't have to. You can just show up as long as you're okay with knowing how DS9 ended or you've watched the end of DS9 because we do talk about that stuff pretty frequently. Um, we do note the episodes that are not about those things. We... Uh, this week, this past week, went put up an episode based on a TNG comic. You can just enjoy that. It's really fucking bad. Oh my god, it's so bad. We had a great time. It's Please enjoy amazing. us laughing. Please enjoy a gallery of stupid images. Um, we've been running for this comic. This uh, the, we've been running this podcast for like three months. And suddenly we realized that comics are available too, and like our whole world opened up. <laughs> you can find that at Star Trek Podcast Space. Um, yes. Abnormal Mapping, of course, you can find at thebestgame.club. Uh, you can find episodes on YouTube, where I also run Let's Plays. I am still working on Life is Strange, because that's a long game. Uh, outside of that, you know the Patreon, patreon.com slash Abnormal Mapping. You can get letters written by me and Jackson on alternating weeks for $5. Uh, you can suggest games. $10 gets you on a show. It's, it's We're still like three months away from people actually showing up on the show, but that's going to happen sooner or later. We're going to have to figure that out. It's going to be crazy. Uh, and $1 just get lets you vote, uh, gives you an update every week. It's good. You can support the show. Even a dollar helps. Uh, we're working on our movie podcast if we hit $200 a month. Yeah, we, uh, we have, have vague we, ideas about what it will be, the scheduling providing. So we have no idea about what it's going to be. <laughs> but also, our ideas are like ambitious and cool. So yes. I hope we reach it someday. Yes. That's it. Everyone go home. Play a video game. I'm going to play a video game, maybe. I mean, I'm going to play Max Payne, but outside of that, who knows? Who knows? Maybe. 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 Never. <laughs>